Hey everyone, today let's dive into Supir. This awesome upscaling tech that's been around for about a year. It adds crazy detail while keeping your images consistent. You might have heard of it or even tried it, but honestly, most folks aren't squeezing everything out of it yet. There's tons of settings to tweak, stuff you barely see in other tools, and figuring them out can feel overwhelming. So in this video, I'll walk you through those parameters with real examples. By the end, you'll know exactly how to use Supir to get the best results. First up, if you haven't tried Supir yet, let me show you what it does. Check out this image made with one 2.2 models. I walked you through making it in another video. It's big, over 2K resolution. Nice details in a crop top, jeans and a bike. But zooming on her face, skin's kinda smooth, right? Lacks texture. Now watch this. Same image after Supir. See the difference? More skin texture. And get this, it's upscaled to 4096 to 4096. And her features still match perfectly. Not sure if I use this as a base and upscaled it again with Flex or another tool, I could get even finer texture. But the key thing about Supir isn't about adding detail. Where it really shines, fixing tiny, low-quality peaks. Check this next example. Original upload was super small, just 240 by 245 pixels. Now compare to Supir's 7 times upscale. Supir keeps the face consistent. Now let's go through the workflow and break down the settings. Heads up, your Confire toolbar may look different than mine because I'm using Running Hub, this online platform for Conf UI. If you're curious, I made a video about it before, links below. The workflow we are using here is also on Running Hub. You can download it for free, no registration needed, links below too. In the first step, we upload and upscale the image. Next, feed the upscaled image into this denoiser node. Two models load here. First, an SDXL checkpoint. This is cool. You can choose different checkpoints based on your needs, and this will affect the final output. Besides the SDXL checkpoint, you need superior specific models. You get two choices, V0F or V0Q. First big confusion point. Some just say pick V0Q but never explain why. After testing hundreds of images, here's the deal. The F in V0F stands for fidelity. That means it plays safe. If it's unsure about details, it won't gamble. So you'll get fewer mistakes. Check these comparison shots. With V0Q, see those freaky long eyelashes and messy forehead hair? V0F avoids those issues. That's fidelity in action. But sometimes, you gotta be bold. If your original image is tiny and blurry, V0F might play it too safe, not enough detail. That's when V0Q shines. Look at this example. Original was tiny, 240 by 245 upscaled 7 times. V0Q balanced the lighting way more detail. V0F kept the uneven lighting. Look at that nose highlights and barely refined anything. Now if your starting image is already big and detailed, V0F and V0Q get way closer. Like this example. Original was 529 by 466 pixels, upscaled 3 times. Back to Conf UI. See this FP8 UNet option? If your GPU has less than 10GB VRAM, flip this to 2. Got over 200GB, turn on high VRAM, speeds up denoising and sampling. You can leave most other settings alone until here, where you type your prompt. Here comes the tricky part. The parameters in the super sampler. There are a lot of them, but once I explain them with some examples, it won't be so overwhelming. First, sampler types. Basically two. Restore DPM++ 2M and restore EDM. Below those, just their tiled versions. Let's compare them. Restore EDM fixes artifacts better than restore DPM++ 2M. Check this case. 
Restore DPM++ plus m made eyelashes way too long, while Restore EDM kept them natural. Another one. Restore DPM++ plus plus m made chin wrinkles split weirdly, looked fake. Restore EDM handled them smoothly. Differences are super clear on eyes and eyebrows too. So if fighting artifacts is your goal, choose Restore EDM, but know it preserves less skin texture. Enough sampler talk, back to Comfy UI. Usually just set this tile size to 1024 and 512, but if Super screams, not enough VRAM, shrink them down. Try sampler tile size 768, sampler tile stride 384. Key rule, tile size always double the tile stride. We'll get to tiled sampler soon. First, setting CFG. Set CFG based on your checkpoint. For leveling models, go lower. The two CFG values can match or be different. Play around. Higher CFG, like 3, pulls more detail from your prompt. For regular checkpoints though, 3 might be too low. Warning, if your original image is small or artifact heavy, high CFG makes those flaws pop. Look at this, I picked Restore DPM++ 2M, got richer details, but also weird hair around the ears and nasty artifacts near the eyes and the ears. When I used Restore EDM, the results were worse, even with the mouse messed up. Quick fix, use lower CFG, then boost the details with an upscaler first, like skin deep detail for skin. Let's see this test. I boost details first with an upscaler like a skin deep detail used here for skin. But if your original is big and clean already, crank that CFG high for max detail. Like this sample. Now that we've covered CFG, let's quickly touch on the tail samplers. Honestly, avoid tail restored EDM. Results look noticeably worse. See this sample. On the other hand, Tiled Restore DPM++ 2M helps keep artifacts minimal. It also works well with high CFG settings like in this example. Look how natural those chin wrinkles are. With normal CFG, it's almost identical to regular Restore DPM++ 2M. But with low CFG, avoid Tiled Restore DPM++ 2M. Let's check this test. Used Tiled Restore DPM++ 2M took 56 seconds. The non-tiled version, just 19 seconds. Alright, moving forward. Speaking of Restore CFG, don't confuse this with regular CFG. Crucial point, Restore CFG does nothing with DPM++ samplers. Let's see this test. Set Restore CFG to minus 1, 5 or 20. Output looks identical. It only matters with EDM samplers. Restore EDM or its tiled version. Check this comparison. With Restore EDM at CFG-1, the hair goes wild, sticking to the walls, and the neck has problems. Set to 5, hair behaves, neck fixes itself. Compare 5 and 20. Only tiny changes. Next. Control scale. Think of it like control net strength. After super, your layout stays close to the original. Tested values 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. Below 1, composition drifts too far. Above 1, keeps layout but wrecks image quality. Sweet point, stick with 1. For EDM S churn, leave default at 5. Test it everywhere, output stays the same no matter what. Last two settings, DPM++ ADA and S noise. That DPM++ in the name means ADA only works with DPM++ style samplers. Restore DPM++ 2M and its tiled version. Crank it up and it smooths details like a beauty filter while cleaning messy here. See these three examples? You get it. Here's the catch. 
Ada and S noise work oppositely. Ada softens things, S noise boosts detail. I made an XY plot to show how they interact. Left to right, Ada from 2 soft to 10 blurry. Top to bottom, S noise from 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. Focus on the left column as S noise increases. Woman's face gets more texture, skin rougher, wrinkles deeper. Backgrounds get noisier too. Now watch Ada's smoothing effect. Skin gradually turns porcelain. But as noise dominates, even with Ada at max, deep wrinkles stick out. My tip, start with as noise, then tweak Ada just enough to smooth things out. Alright, that's all for today. If this video helped you, make sure to subscribe. See you next time.